Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and we've been producing a series of videos about making your own wooden countertops. Ours were made from solid walnut, and so far we've shown you how to create a template and how to cut the big miters on the corner. In this video, we're going to tackle one of the biggest questions that people have been asking. How do you choose and apply a durable finish? Since countertops take a lot of abuse, you need something that will protect it from water, heat, and grease. Notice I didn't say a finish should protect it from bumps and bruises. This isn't granite. Wood is a different material with a different look, and you should have different expectations. Dents and blemishes are bound to happen, just as they would on your dining table or on your hardwood floor. It's part of the character that's unique to wood. And to me, it looks far better than slathering some plasticky epoxy shell to protect it completely. So my finish of choice is General Finishes Armor Seal, which is not a sponsor. This is a urethane-based top coat, but unlike the polyurinate that you get from the hardwood store, this is a fine furniture finish that's made from the highest quality resins. It'll penetrate into the wood, hardening and sealing the outer fibers while producing a beautiful finished surface. It will not make your counters completely waterproof. It will make them water resistant. That means it won't keep out the water if you submerge your counter in the pool overnight, but it will resist the moisture from normal kitchen use. Just wipe up your spills, as any reasonable person would, instead of letting a puddle of Kool-Aid dry overnight. The best part about Armor Seal is it's easy to apply. Put it on liberally and spread it with a lint-free cloth. I like to use a piece of t-shirt material folded into a pad. The first coat is going to sink into the wood, especially in places where the grain curls towards the surface. Give it all it will absorb and wipe the excess away. I like to move in one direction with the grain, but this is less important on the first coat. It will begin to dry fairly quickly, so avoid going back over areas you've already applied finish to. Just you work your way methodically from one edge to the other. It's up to you whether you want to wear a respirator. I certainly wouldn't want to inhale the stuff all day long, but I find it's not as bad as other finishes. In fact, I've even finished countertops inside the house and it hasn't been overwhelming. At the very least though, you do want to ventilate the area the best you can. Now the manufacturer says to wait 12 to 24 hours between coats. I've successfully applied a new coat after just three or four hours, but that's going to depend on the weather and obviously on the thickness of the coat. You definitely don't want to recoat if the surface feels at all tacky or cool to the touch. A way to test it is to press a cotton ball against the surface. If nothing sticks, you're probably good to go. But before applying more finish, lightly hand sand with 400 grit sandpaper, or something in that range. You just want to smooth things out. You don't want to remove a lot of the finish you just put on. And if your paper's gumming up, you just need to wait and let it dry some more. When you're done sanding, remove the dust with compressed air or a vacuum, and then wipe it with water or mineral spirits. Now the second coat is not going to absorb like the first one, so put it on a bit thinner. Then repeat that drying, sanding, wiping process and move on to a third coat. This time be really careful to avoid streaking. Wipe in one direction, don't go back over an area once you've left it. And especially if you're using a satin finish, stir it frequently to keep the flattening agent suspended. Otherwise your countertop will be flat in one area and shiny in another. I can't stress enough that you shouldn't over wipe. If you see a streak in an area you've already covered, leave it alone it'll most likely disappear when it's completely dry. Just be methodical. Make sure you get everything evenly wet as you work and you'll be fine. After the third coat dries, I like to lightly sand with about 600 grit this time. Then I wipe on the thinnest coat I can while still wetting everything evenly. Often the finish that's already in your cloth from your previous coats will be enough to just cover everything. This super thin coat will dry quickly before all those little dust particles that are in the air have time to settle. It's a great way to get a nice finish in a dusty environment. However, if you do this and you find out after it dries that it's streaky, it's because you went on a little bit too thin. So go back and do it again. Three regular coats and one super thin final coat is all you need. It will do you no good to add more. Ten coats will be no more durable than three with this finish. I do like to do a final buffing with a brown paper bag, which is roughly equivalent to 1500 grit sandpaper. Then let it cure for 30 days. If at all possible, don't use the countertops in this time, especially not in the first week. You certainly don't want to set anything heavy on them like small appliances. 
and definitely nothing plastic or it will stick to the finish. Now every countertop material requires a different maintenance routine. Wood must be kept clean. If you spill something, wipe it up. Don't cut directly on your countertop, use a cutting board. Expect a few small nicks and dents to accumulate over time. But if it looks like a nick penetrated through the finish, dab on a little armor seal onto that spot to seal it back up. If after a few years, they look like they should be recoated, sand it with 220 grit and apply a couple thin new coats. Your wooden countertops will outlast you. I'll put links in the notes below to the armor seal finish that I use and to the other videos in this series so you can check them out. Enjoy. This is a Koenigsegg, Sweden's finest sports car. This is a Joburgs, Sweden's finest workbench. There are things for people who appreciate quality and high performance, something they can pass down to their grandkids' grandkids. You can't afford this, but this will cost you less than a good cabinet saw. Check out what Joburgs has to offer at the link below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.